think we are live. All right, welcome to uh, episode uno of uh, number one of uh, Football in the Kitchen Sink. I think that's what we're going to start out with as our name here. Co Coach Schumann and Coach D here. Uh, Coach D. Pascal, for those of you who like to pronounce his uh, full name. <laughs> Hey, uh, which I spelled wrong for probably uh, the first 10 years of uh, of having you uh, work, work camps and stuff. I spelled it with a Q, I think. <laughs> You're not the first one. You sure as heck won't be the last one. I guess it's on me for not correcting you. I probably didn't even realize it or probably didn't even really notice it, to be honest. But it's, uh, uh, yeah, it is what it is. But this is good. This is cool. I think this is something we can uh, we can build on and we can, uh, you know. Talk it out. I mean, everything from whatever, football, and God knows what else we'll get into. But uh, especially with the world we're living in right now, I'm sure there'll be other topics that are going to come up that we can uh, bring to the forefront or discuss or at least, you know, give our opinions on. That's for sure. Absolutely. So add some light to the situations. Yeah, I've taken um, – we're basically taking uh, our format of talking on the phone. <laughs> right to – And broadcasting it. Right, broadcasting it. So um, – uh, I guess we could start. I mean, a, a local, you know, a local thing. Uh, the New Jersey NJ.com football rankings, and then, um, you know, obviously we 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 coach over in Red Bank. So uh, this year we were not a uh, uh, it, it, it conversation. Maybe one day we will be. <laughs> Hopefully. So, um, but uh, it's it's uh, controversial in New Jersey because um, the number one team. Uh, is is Wall Wall High School, which is down in our conference, Shore Conference. Uh, went undefeated, yeah, cool. defeated, yep, defeated Donovan Catholic um, in the in our what we have pods and stuff like that this year because there was no playoffs. So that was kind of the Shore Conference championship pod. And the controversy is, um, you know, they're number one, um, and number two was. Uh, Holy Spirit, which is down in South Jersey towards Atlantic City, who won private school, right? Private school who won the that West Jersey pod, and then um, which was I think the two who did they beat? Um, uh, I forgot who they beat in their West Jersey pod, but they they they, they defeated uh, the other top team I think in their they, the way they grouped the same way that we did in the short did the same kind of thing, and they're group two I believe, correct? I think they're group two, yeah. So, um, yeah, because traditionally they would play like St. Joe's Hamilton, I think, was their um, uh, team that they normally would, would, would battle out in, in their uh, championship section. And then you got – They are, let's see, non-public group two, correct. And they – just let's see. Ooh, they didn't play many games at all, coach. Freaking, they were yeah. Holy Cross. Oh man, I think they only had yes. West New West Jersey Football League though. So uh, we've seen a lot. We've come across a lot of the uh, with the year that it has been. We've definitely seen a lot of teams travel. That's for sure. Um, and I think uh, us obviously being uh, from North Jersey. And coming down here and hearing about the Shore Conference itself, um, to have in only our second year have a Shore Conference team ranked as the number one team in the state, uh, kind of adds some kudos to, to just where we're coaching and the type of football that we're coaching. Uh, however, um, you're always going to have your North Jersey, South Jersey controversy. And uh, this year is, you know, just follows suit along with that. Um, as far as that's concerned. So, you know, I'm sure a bunch of teams up North um, from that big North are, are going to be a little upset because, you know, they do play each other and basically beat the hell out of each other the entire year. Right. Um, literally. I mean, and those are the three and four, right? So three was Del Barton, which is not usually in there either. Right. Right. They were undefeated. And then four was Bergen Catholic. Right. So who beat, St. Peter's Prep. Del Barton was supposed to play Bergen Catholic. Didn't end up playing them because of – that was the on-the-field COVID-19 COVID uh, cancel. That, would be, uh, that was the uh, – we just warmed up for pregame and coach is about to give us our run-through-the-wall speech and uh, instead we're packing up and going home. Yep, 
Yep. So that that I thought was um Yeah. I thought that was the most bizarre thing we were going to see until I read that Ocean City yeah. was playing this weekend and they went in for halftime and that was the end of that game. Right. So uh, and they were playing one of the one of the other powerhouses in South Jersey, uh, Williamstown. Really? I think Williamstown, yeah. Williamstown, something I, I think along that. Yep. Along those lines. Um <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I don't. I thought, you know, us, you know, go in our situation where we went basically a week and a half without practice and then dialed it up on a Saturday yep. after a walkthrough was going to be one of those moments. But, you know, 2020 has only showed us that, I mean, damn. I mean, warming up for a game, being there, not playing it, and then to have another team play a half and then not finish the game I, I don't know man I don't know it's just there's a lot of stuff that went on this year but I mean you might as well just throw this other wrinkle into it with a with a public school team going down as the number one team uh at the end of the year because why not everything else during this year has been controversial or something unprecedented and I'm not saying this isn't unprecedented because I believe uh, the last time it was done was 2015 when another shore conference team um, in Middletown South finished the year uh, as the number one. But um, we've we've discussed it time and time again. At the end of the day, these are just rankings, right? I mean, it's just – it's a matter of – it's a record. It's it's basically the newspaper guys, you know, the media guys that put together this this top 25 and they have their criteria. Um, so it's a, it's a pseudo – you know, it's just – it's basically a bragging right type of thing. Hey, hey. we're going to be in the state. You know, uh, we look at it too. Like we said, there's, there's teams that aren't even in the top 25 that win state championships, you know, or actually go home with titles in years where you have years that have titles. Um, this year doesn't have that. So I guess it just, you know, there's more hanging on the number one top 25 ranking, but, uh, man, I'll tell you, there was some active people on Twitter this weekend, oh. whether it be, you know, whether it be any anybody from the north that was, you know, talking about who's playing who and who beat who. And if if you were to play us, you'd lose by whatever. And and look. So so what what do you like? I love that you brought it up. You like how you bring things up just like uh, on the slide. But um, I thought it was interesting when I could read the NJ.com article before it went behind the subscription paywall, which is <laughs> as it gets. Um, I, somehow I read it before and I guess it was, it must have been a time clock. Um, yeah, only, only five free articles coach. Yeah. Yeah. So what I remember from my memory was they had like a rationale there and, um, and, and actually I read all, all the different teams that were in the rankings, but the, the one thing I thought, so, you know, I think Burger Catholic w wanted to be number one, but obviously they ended up four. Uh, Del Barton definitely had an argument, like we talked about. They ended up three. Holy Spirit ended up two. And and now I don't know that much about Holy Spirit, so me neither. Probably the probably the team I know the least about, just probably. as far as just where they are. Look, I've no, I know for some way, shape, or form, I've heard their names before, whether it be late '90s, early 2000s. Uh, for some reason, I always remember them kind of playing Del Barton, maybe in a in a some way type of thing. Um, or, or something of that nature, but once it, it just kind of follows suit that even your number two team is a private school, whether it be not right. one of those, you know, when we think of the private schools, you obviously, you know, you think of the big North, you think of your Boscos, you think of your Bergens, you think of your Joes, um, Paramus Catholic was in there for a little while. You think of your DePaul, you know, I mean, you're thinking about all these teams that are, you know, in that big North conference that, like we said, just bash each other's heads in week to week. And then you've got, you know, group three wall from short conference. Um, I, I'll, I'll fire up a couple of things that have come through on my chat. Can you see the chat that I have to or no? Uh, can I see it? I don't think so. Okay. No. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Can I see it? Can I see oh, it? Yeah, first okay. of all, uh, we'll oh, guy. Oh, hello, Coach Bertola. How can I? Uh, That's before we get to Coach Patola, which I definitely gonna get to, because he, he's great. We should first of all, he should be like he's gonna be on. He should be, yeah, absolutely. He should, he he should, he should, he should be, he should be a guest. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> but, but before before we get uh, 
uh, go to that. Oh uh, yeah, we can't even touch that. Who gave us a quick shout out over there? Uh, uh, whoop, that's not that's that's me. Okay, oh there we go, Coach Davis. We well, got Davis, it. man. That's a hell of a career, brother. Yeah. Coach Davis, Barnegat High School, the only head coach in program history takes a step down after this year. Look, man. No, no. Listen, if if I didn't know what else to do, I'd probably step down after this year too, with everything that went on. So, but uh, Coach Davis, great career. Uh, always was extremely receptive when when we came down here. Um, I've always been, a, you know, just a just a guy who uh, you know has basically opened his doors and anything I, I ever needed, we ever needed, has reached out to us. He's been definitely a. Uh, a liaison as far as, you know, signing off on these two North Jersey guys coming down to the shore, but uh, coach calling it a career after, uh, or at least, at, you know, career with, with Barnegat high school um, leaves that program obviously in a better state than it was since when he started. Uh, I believe it was 18 years ago, but I think it was 2000, maybe 2000, 2006. I think the high school opened. I don't know. Somebody's gonna have to fact he's check. Really me. The coach know. there, so I mean, what, what he's done there. He's been the only head coach, absolutely. Yeah. Although I think it's pretty cool. You know, he started a program from scratch. I think that's really cool, and that's phenomenal. You know, built it up in his image. So anyone who t- takes over, I'm assuming maybe one of his assistants, but whoever takes over that program going forward, um, you know, he, he built it in his image, and so you're kind of awesome. building that that legacy, which is cool, which is really cool. So I mean, congrats to him and. And I'm sure we'll see him again some sometime in the future somewhere. Um, yeah, I'm sure. I don't. I, listen, I, I for a guy like that to just you know, like I mean, he'll pop up. He's got to pop up somewhere. And if if anybody needs a if somebody on their staff or whatever, even a behind the scenes guy to just show up on game day, that's the guy. That's for sure. Somebody well, give him a call. So GB had a great great <laughs> post. Two things he posted, right? So he coaches at uh, uh, guy Bertola, Coach Bertola coaches at over at Paul. And uh, he's he you know he, he he made light of it, but he's like you know number one number one TV in public school is uh, horse blank and uh, uh, and the strength of schedule of Max Preps you know <laughs> uh, well I think Ball was ranked eleven big obviously we look now we're from North Jersey people who haven't coached in both areas um, may not know the different things so I, I'll give you kind of my impressions uh, of. And we and we played hack and sack, although it's it's it you know it wasn't uh, two powerhouses this year, but but uh, but hack and sack, man. I don't care what anybody wants to say. Still, I mean, we had a ton of ton of talent out there, and uh, in a different situation where all of us had regular time, I think we would have had a fantastic season over at Red Bank. Um, yeah, and, not for uh, our liking, though. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Um, and our guys did a great job, and and hack and sack played a really tough schedule, public. But what's re- re- what? But, but being from North Jersey, I you know, obviously that single conference in in North Jersey is, is the best conference in North in, in New Jersey, which is the ones with the parochials. And here's here's my interesting take on it too. So, the parochials obviously have dominated. I don't know. I think the only other time that they weren't number one was 2015, maybe. And I'm talking about recent years when Milltown South was number one. I think that was pretty controversial at the time. I'm sure it was. Um, at, you know, at, at Mid South, and and uh, is obviously always a power powerhouse public school program. Right. Wall, Wall is um, uh, Wall is a phenomenal team, and you know, I I thought you know beating Donovan, who I thought was phenomenal for down here, uh, it was, <laughs> was was really good. So I'll give you, I'll give you my input. First of all, I think Wall deserved to get number one in this year from the situation of what went down. Normally they probably, if they went all the way through and let's say they ran the table and won the group three state championship. Okay. And oh, uh, uh, yeah. beat us in the finals now, yeah, or, or we, we got to the finals and beat that. No. So if we all got all the way to the championship, let's say it let's just the hypothetical and um, use the hypothetical and they got all the way to the championship this year. Um, and won it. And the parochials got to the championship and won it. They would have probably never had a chance to be number one. Because the parochials, the the large the big school parochial, unless somehow it was, you know, like 
which it didn't work out that way this year. Like DePaul maybe went undefeated. That would have, and they didn't end up play, you know, let's say they played in their group three version and they could have won the championship without playing one of the big parochials. But let's in normal years, the big parochials have been number one off of that. So that wall wouldn't have had uh, a chance in, in, in this case, in most cases, almost no pro a public school would have had a chance in yeah. a normal situation because the parochial group four, I believe it is, would have went through their playoffs. Right. One, that would have been the de facto best team as it's been every single year, other than if there's something crazy where, like, I don't know, let's see if a team that didn't have that good a record made a run and won it all, okay? Right. And, maybe, and, and 2000, I don't know what 2015 was like, but maybe that was something similar. And I know Mid-South went defeated when they got it. This year, with the COVID-19 restriction rules and everything like that, uh, travel and all those kind of things made some things difficult. I know our own situation. Uh, things were difficult. We were shut down three times, and it, it, it was tough um, uh, to be able to to just operate the season at times. And uh, um, I think like our kids did a fantastic job, and most of the kids around the state did a fantastic job uh, of doing everything. So I thought in this year with Wall having a kind of – you know, what they call the unofficial short conference championship, which I think is a great idea going forward because I'd like to, to one day I do like it. myself. I like the idea of it. I do like that. And the whole I real idea comes from the NJIC up north, how they do that. I think this year, Becton, shout out Group to my Group one, brother. baby. Group one ball. I think Becton won that one there. And, and yeah. I think that's pretty cool. So, um, and that's like those. That's like that's like your Hasbro Heights of the world, right? Your Pompton Lakes is your 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 uh, Woodridge, right? Those those small Group One Bergen County teams that uh, what do they do? They play like six games and then they reseed and then they play it. You know, the last two games of the year for basically your conference title, um, which is awesome. I'm looking at some of these guys commenting in our chat and whatnot, and like you know, it's not because we you got. Uh, my boy Spencer Fox coaches at Joe's. He played for me at Bosco. So you got a, a Joe's guy in here and a DePaul guy in here already and already going at it. You know what I mean? Um, guy, go figure. Look, I know you're eating, you know, look at guy is already at the guy. I saw you uh, speaking of Cedar Grove, throwing Cedar Grove in there. Um, I saw a coach who's been at St. Peter's uh, stepped away finally after five years, I think. Oh, uh, what's his, uh, why am I forgetting his name, Dave? The, uh, Sadlock. Hey, Sadlock. Yes. Yeah, so at five, five years at prep, I guess coach Hanson decided to, to hang it up. And I guess coach Sadlock decided to hang it up too, but another one of those Jersey guys, that's never going to go away from the game. Hopefully he's around. Did you happen? Side note, by the way, did you see the picture posted on Twitter of the godfathers of North Jersey football? Oh, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, of course. How is that like uh, how many wins between in that picture alone? So how, 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 is that how, how does three of them get to be coaching at Bird Cap? <laughs> Talk about its staff. Right, so obviously the answer, to just, reference it. So those of you guys that didn't see it, uh the picture was of um it was taken and it was of Greg Toll, obviously lifelong guy. Uh Bosco built it, made it you know, big time head coach, uh, coach Tony Carstich, uh, from St. Joe's of Montvale, um, built that program and, and, and stepped away a few years ago. Um, yeah, and then it was, Catholic, if you didn't know that, I didn't know that. That's why it was like craziness when I saw it. Um, coach Hanson, obviously rich Hanson, the head coach at St. Peter's Try prep in the past, God knows how many years. And then, um, uh, um, oh hell, what's his, uh, uh, friggin', I'm losing it. Bergen Catholic. What's his name? The last the Stengel? Fred Stengel? Stengel. Coach Stengel. Uh at Bergen Catholic. You know that I'm older than you. What right? do you mean? I, I, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, like I said, obviously I'm biased because I was fortunate enough to coach with Coach Toll at, at Bosco for, for a year. And that's that's my claim to fame as far as uh my experience in the big north itself and, and then with, with Coach Toll. But to see those four guys, you know. Three of them wearing red, coaching at Bergen. You know, Coach Vito up there, man. I mean, if that's not a staff, I don't. You know, wow. Um, but to to just to see those four guys, you know, all now have all now non head coaches. You know, so you can really see this pendulum start to swing. Um, and you know, 
I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here, but we're talking about, you know, those big North coaches that everybody thinks about. There's all new guys in charge now, man. You know, oh, okay. well, that's also interesting, but I think the, the I, I, tenured, so I gave you my, so my final my, circling back. Cause I, I think we, we talked about this earlier circling back. I, I, I'll put it like this. If there was a game between Wall and uh, – now, in uh, fairness, I don't know exactly what Holy Spirit has, so I don't know enough about it. But let's say Wall and Del Barton or Wall and Burton Catholic. Anything can happen in any game, but I think it would be very difficult to me just because obviously the parochials are getting kids from everywhere. Wall's literally playing with uh, – I'm assuming they are – with all Wall kids. And uh, um, and so, you know, that's that's – totally different situation so you know i would say like nine out of ten times probably the parochial is going to win that uh if there was a head-to-head battle anything can happen in one single game of everybody course. understands that uh but i do like the fact in in our state where definitely the parochial schools dominate that in a unique year like this that wall came out number one to me it wasn't really about like who might in, the, in this ranking, I'm guessing how uh, kind of how they're ranking and why I kind of like it is that it wasn't so much about um, uh, the team that if they played each other, because like you said, Max Preps has Burn Catholic, I think it's number one, I think. Yeah. I'm and, sure. um, but that what, yeah, what, it's not it's not so much a head to head battle. It's more and of was able to accomplish even beating Donovan, right, who is a pro and who has done a great job. Um of uh, a lot of good players in. I mean, they, they have some. And they, some- you know, they ended up last year, you know, if you want to reference that, Donovan last year probably had their best year in school history and ended up losing to DePaul in the playoffs, who would eventually go on to beat modern day in the finals for that group three parochial. Um, so now you see Wall taking, you know, this year Wall goes and beats Donovan in that pseudo championship game. Um, so no, can you measure it that way? You know, do you, do you match it up that way? But, um, like you said, I think it's look, so my take on the whole thing is that, look, you, you got a public school who's at the ranking, you know, they're number one. Um, and like I said, this is why I reference this is rankings are rankings for a reason. There, there's not a, there's not a, look, it's not a matter of, I don't think it's it's just an opinion and it's right. There's a look, there's a criteria set. This is what did they check all these boxes? Yep, number one. Okay, good. Now, now is think- anybody who ranked Wall number one saying that if Wall went out and played Bergen nine out of ten times, who's gonna win the game? Or right, is it right. any of that stuff? And like I referenced to you this morning, uh, this morning, a few years ago, when you had University of Central Florida undefeated, say we're the national champions, you know, and right. then you have Alabama, who actually was the national champions, it's two different worlds. You know what I'm saying? So, great. You know, and and like I said, at the end of the day, it's a ranking, it's a number, it is what it is. During this year, absolutely, where there's no championships, there's no nothing, there's no that. That single number one ranking is going to, in my eyes, you know, bring home a little bit more weight than it would in another year where you could go and Wall could win the Group Three state championship. You know, now they actually have hardware. This is their hardware for that year. You know? Absolutely, I, I think I think it was kind of a, a, a cool thing, and and most years it's not even basically a, a, an option. Uh, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, no, I, look, and, uh, and anybody, but I think know, the Shore you, Conference, the Shore Conference, should do a tournament because you know what? If we do a tournament like that, we play what would it be? Six games. Is, what what the what does the NJIC do? Six games. Well, no. What did they? What, uh, and then they, they, and they match up. Oh, yes, yes. They do six, and then they match up to a records uh, like four, and then they play like a one. Everybody two. else records for the last. Everybody game. else plays for and that. Play spots. Right. Right. But it, but it never cuts into your actual playoff season during a regular year. I, I think that's awesome. If we were able to do that down the shore, that'd be awesome. I think it's, listen, the way they set things up this year where we had that pseudo shore championship game, like I think that's that's phenomenal. I think that's that's awesome. I think that's a, a very cool way to go about it. I think it, you know, in what I've experienced is 
in the last two years with this conference, they, they kind of like to do their own thing and not really worry about anybody else. It's more short conference based. Yep. So that's something that you want to do going forward. I think having a short conference champion is. I, I mean, yeah. I think it was ex- if that game was. Yeah, if you were allowed to have people there. There would have uh, been, I couldn't even imagine. There definitely would be. And so it's, it's definitely would have been 10,000. I mean, I think, I, I, I think the NGIC who, who started that idea and, and we talked about it when I was still up uh, with the Super Conference when I was at Indian Hills. They talked about that idea, but it's such a big conference that it's Huge. You would have to break that up into this and that and, and then. Exactly. So look, if you wanted to make it work, do it. The short that's the thing. You wanted to make it work, you, you right. uh, definitely could. It's big conferences, but it's, it's you know, it's what are we talking, 40 teams? So. You got 43 or 44. I don't know remember what it is. Shore? shore is like 40 something teams. Yeah, I believe it's I think it's 43 football playing schools in the shore. Yeah. So that I mean, I think that that would be really cool if they went forward. And then you know, it doesn't affect the playoffs because you play basically you play six and you play your plus two, then everybody's ranked for the playoffs, and then you're you're good to go, man. And and um you you know you go and play the playoffs, and so it's it's pretty cool because you can play a conference championship. And still have a chance to win a state championship, even if you don't win a conference championship. So I'm, absolutely, I think that's the best part. The best part to it, absolutely. So is that you're still going to get, you know, like hey, you know, it's just like say, hey, you know, I didn't win my conference, but I won my, you know, I went out and won a state championship. <laughs> I'm not even a conference champ, but I won something. You know what I mean? Like an opportunity to take home more hardware, um, uh, which I think is 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 cool. And look, kudos to whoever handled scheduling and all that stuff or even oh, yeah. just putting up any of this stuff for that year because i mean those guys deserve more than just a pay raise great job you know? um well all the games you lost over and over again i mean it's, i mean and it's on that so i think for all of us you it, know it, it, whether it, we're amazing. whether you're a coach whether you're administrator whether you're freaking you know what i mean like any role that you played in this season everybody deserves a pat on the back for the ability to just kind of roll with the punches and, and some of us that are so creatures of habit and, you know, need to prepare for this team for whatever. I mean, look, man, we rolled it out and dialed it up with no practice for a week and a half or, you know, who was playing, you know, supposed to be playing one team on Monday game gets changed to somebody else on Wednesday. And then before you know it, you're playing a third team on Friday right. night. You know? So just that whole thing and the ability for, you know, coaches to kind of, kind of you, you know, that, that, that part was kind of fun. Like, uh, kind of just uh, wing, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of you know, like wing, wing, it, yeah, winged it. I don't know yeah, if I mean, winging it's it's the most, put I it. I don't ever want to have to do that again if I don't have to, but, uh, it, but, but definitely it, that, that part made it, uh, interesting. Um, you know, I missed my having my whole summer and, and being able to do what we normally do. That way we could, uh, prepare the right way. But it was, I mean, it was great to have the kids have a season. That was the most important thing. I think thing. that was and, the, yeah, that's the biggest thing is that I, you saw the uh, – You saw you still have to get kids get recruited from it, and that's a big thing, right, because, um, I mean, we just know with our guys, right, you know, if we didn't have a season, like o- o- Owen Laughlin may not be going to Richmond. I mean, you know, uh, and other guys may not have gotten the opportunities that they're gonna about to have. So um, – and that goes for everybody. So it, it's one of those things where um, – I'm um, glad everybody got got to play. Got something, got something you know. And like we said, we're, 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 we're hoping for it, right? Like when our schedule came out and they realigned and they did whatever, we were just praying to get to six games. You know, we were hoping for six. You know, and we got just that six. Whether I they came, that. GB, GB posted that at one time he had three three game plans in his. <laughs> that's great. That's, and that's isn't that the truth though? Because I mean. Great. You know, I mean, look, you, you, if you can, I said this to a lot of people before this season said, and, and it rains true. And it's, you know, it references to some of our coaches on our staff who were first year. I mean, we had what three first, first time coaches, assistant coaches with us this year. And for them to yeah. go through this year and experience this world, like it was, you know, I think that they should be able to co- to coach God knows when, because I don't think anything will ever touch this year. You know, it only get easier. There's no doubt. Um, but like I said, the, the credit goes to the kids, you know, I mean, those guys, I mean, 
look, it, it's easy for us to handle, I mean, you know, handle things and whatever. But I mean, these kids are, they're dealing with, am I going to school? Am I not going to school? I'm not, you know, it's not the same thing. And, and people don't realize they haven't been just dealing with this, you know, since September or August or, you know, I mean, they've been dealing with this since last March. You know what I mean? I mean, so you got kids that, you know, our seniors have now missed, you know, they missed an entire half year of school pretty much. And now, you know, it's almost a year of school that they've, they've, they've been out, you know, whether they're now, whether you're, you're in school or you're virtual or you're seeing them sometimes or, and whatnot. I mean, just think about the, the, the routines and the, and the, the traditions and the, the functioning of the, and the logistics that, that go into a program, week to week to week. I'm sure coach Davis can attest to this, you know, like I'm sure, you know, his JVs play on Monday. He watches film with his varsity on Monday, you know, Tuesday, they may watch film or do whatever on Tuesdays and then Wednesdays. And then your, your pasta dinners on your Thursdays. And now you're looking at this world and it's, we didn't even, we don't have a, nobody's got a locker room. Nobody, how do we meet and do this? How do we do this with our kids? You know, I mean, just the whole everything, you know, oh, right yeah. now, you know, coaching in a mask. Zoom, Zoom, meeting, Zoom meetings, coaching in a mask. Oh, my God. I mean, and like you said, I, I'm happy that the kids got six games. You know, I'm happy that our guys, you know, got tape um, to move forward. But, I mean, that's something that I know we're going to address going forward is just, you know, the entire recruiting world now. I mean, you're looking at colleges that – Kids can, I mean, some, you know, we, we see whatever on Saturdays on TV, but we're talking division two, II, division three, FCS schools, all these, I mean, the NJAC division three, like they're playing four games in the spring. And then those kids don't lose an, a year of eligibility. So how do I recruit if I don't know who's coming back or who is coming back? You know, I mean, parents, you know, look, you know, how, you know, as well as I do recruiting is an interesting beast that most parents are either misinformed, uninformed, or just not informed at all in general. Also, also and now, rapidly, this year, well, to, now you throw all of that into it, and now you're talking. Now you got a whole nother level of I don't know what the hell is going on. What do I do? Been my hardest uh, year in recruiting because with, for, with helping the kids because of the fact that there's less scholarships available. Um, you know, I've had numerous coaches tell me that, you know, they're, they they basically have to reserve some spots for some states that may play in the spring, right? And then you have um, uh, uh, junior college kids that might be more valuable, kids that are coming back who don't lose eligibility in college because they're getting another year granted. So it's it's costing them all these scholarships um, that normally would be available. And so they really have to figure out what's the best situation. This this would be the year more than ever, I would say, if you're a football player and you, you don't get a scholarship offer, choose a place that you want to be for four, four years because, you you know. That's all that's going to matter, man. When, without stuff. football, you know, we always tell our guys, like, the first thing you got to do when, when you is you got to love the school itself. Like, don't go play for a team. Don't go play just because, they're you know, whatever. Don't go play for a coach. Go play because you want to be at that school. Um, and so like you said, I think this year is more than anything because, you know, some of these guys got on campus and now without football, what are they doing? I, I want to shift to our Broncos story that we talked about. What do you think? Yeah. Listen. Right. Could you see Could you see this on the screen or no? I don't know if you can. Can I see this on the screen? Absolutely. Broncos, ugly QB situation. Here's why Denver couldn't sign a free agent QB and why the game didn't get postponed. So – for everybody that doesn't know what's going on, the Denver Broncos this weekend had um, a quarterback test positive, positive. Um, and with that and all the you know the contact tracing things that go along with it, they um, apparently in this quarterback room. So whoever this QB coach is uh, needs needs some adjustment. Um, but apparently, each one of their quarterbacks was exposed to a level with the person that tested positive that would put other people at risk. Therefore they were deemed ineligible to play this weekend. So I believe it was, what was it? Friday when this story broke Friday, Thursday or Friday, Thursday, Friday, maybe, maybe it was even Saturday, but the story broke and it came down to it that the Denver Broncos had no quarterbacks on the roster, literally. So no on the roster, but could not play due to 
COVID-19 restrictions. So you now have an NFL team. We're talking NFL team, billions of dollars, who the only per the best quarterback available to play was their GM and John Elway. <laughs> If you suited it up, that would have been a, as comical as it comes. My, it, would my, like, it would have looked like Mike Tyson fighting Roy Jones. My, my question is, uh, yeah, I, I uh, and um, uh, GB says uh, the QB is selfish. No doubt. So, the, so they're QBs, man. So the guy got – they, they wouldn't sit in a room. Well, QBs aren't supposed to be selfish. I mean, uh, isn't that the point of them being QBs? Aren't they the ones supposed to lead the team? When you played quarterback briefly for the time period that you resented it, yeah, you were selfish. <laughs> the only reason I like doing it was because I got to call my own number when I wanted to. <laughs> oh, coach, what are you talking about? That play was definitely – I thought you oh, called it. Yeah. Oh, you thought I, I called it. it right now. I'm running the ball. I love it. But, yeah, yeah, wait, wait, wait. What are we doing? But, look, yeah, um, to me that's just on, a, on an entire – Look, we know football, and we talk about it all the time, is the ultimate team sport, right? So you, you got to get 11 guys on the same page. And, and and a lot of the time, for the most part, if you're talking offensively, in order to be successful, you got five guys up front that have to do their job, who most times nobody even knows who they are. But without them, you can't do anything. And so now we're talking about guys in the NFL making millions of dollars a year who just don't want to wear a mask. You know, I mean, we talk about it all the time. It's not so much. Look, if if it's different, like, well, the, well the, if I don't care about it, I'm not concerned with getting sick. That's one thing. Here's the biggest thing: is like everybody else, right? Your opinion of the whole situation, whatever your opinion is, correct. Your viewpoint on it. Your viewpoint, uh, and and whatever angle you want to take, right? Whatever you want to take when you're working for somebody else, which is what they're doing. You have to job. follow the rules. That's your job. So your job. if you don't like it, you got to go get another job. I'm sorry, but if you don't oh, like it, then go have to somebody else. For somebody and then don't have somebody else pay you money to, to play quarterback. Yeah. yeah, in the NFL's case, you're not – you're gonna to have to appeal to Roger Goodell, and that's they're not changing. And, 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 yeah, and he's not really he's not exactly the guy that's gonna you know he, look, but the fact that and, and we're talking about guys who are, you know, uh, ESPN Radio this morning, you know, they they were talking and and he, it, two of the guys in that room, right, in in Blake's in Blake Bortles and in uh, Luck, right, the other guy, um, or Locke, is it Luck or Locke? I believe it's I don't know one of those two, something like that. But Locke is just trying to develop himself into becoming a quarterback in this league. And Blake Bortles is trying to establish himself so that he could finish his career as a backup and continue to cash these checks. So you're talking about two of these guys who are really kind of on that narrow window of, am I going to be successful in the NFL or am I going to have to go find something else to do? And still, at the end of the day, they're like, I'm not wearing a mask. <laughs> you know? Crazy. I like, first of all, aren't they going to get, uh, I'm assuming they're going to get fined massively. The NFL just fined the Saints a couple of weeks ago like, for why? wearing masks in the locker room and celebrating. They find they find them half a mil. That's why I say, reg like, regardless, you know, now. And here, here's my other thing. We're if, talking about if, NFL. If, if they want to protest it, they, you know, they just go give Roger Goodell a call and then, then maybe they get the rule change. I mean, yeah, but otherwise you have to follow the rule, you know. You're talking about an NFL position group room, right? Like, how does that get out? How does something out of how does something get out of that room as far as like, hey, guys aren't wearing masks in that room? Well, that's, and that kind of like, I, I think that like that, I, I'm sure. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm looking at that like maybe from a QB and administration, uh, QB, a uh, coach and administration standpoint. If you know. If, if if you know the situation and you know you don't make people aware of it, you you know you you can be in a bind yourself. So, yeah. so that kinda, it, you know I can kind of tie just, that in kind of with the what's going on in Baltimore right now. I, I mean that's what I hate, hate about all this kind of stuff is that like you're putting people in tight spots. You're, and, you're forcing people to make yeah. a decision that they don't want to have to make. Yeah, well, it's, 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 it's a coach. Uh, 
has, now has to be medical director. You know, I mean, it, so listen, a lot of guys are wearing a lot of different hats in here. And like I said, to, to tie in the situation going on in Baltimore right now, all of that issues, those issues That's that are have yeah. written, is that have Lamar Jackson? Lamar Jackson tested positive. I think they right. had 18 guys test positive. It was, I know it's, I think it was yesterday when I read it, it was um, there was eight straight days where somebody had tested positive and that all stems from a strength and conditioning coach, not wearing his mask. Is that what, oh, so, oh, really? Okay. That's how that whole thing started. So I think if there's one underlying thing to all of these issues itself is wear your damn mask. So <laughs> And, 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 you know, people on both sides, people are going to argue for the mask, against the mask. But you have to follow the rules of your employment. Rules, man. I think that's the biggest thing. So let me see here. Let me see if I go. I'm trying like, to find this. Uh, listen, like, listen, if you want to continue to cash your check, aren't you going to do what you're yeah, doing? It do? doesn't make sense to me. And, and if you want to be around, you know, uh, Ravens, wow, up to 23 players. On a, I, didn't, I didn't even – I knew oh, about Lamar Jackson. So my question is then this, like, what? So and this stemmed originally from the- from a strength coach who obviously came into, you know, contact with those players, and then it's just gone out of like you know just kept One going, and it's just going and going. Go. Now they're wearing masks, right? Now they are, but still, now now you once you have somebody test positive, now it's different whether you're contact tracing and you're just saying, look, yeah. you might have it, you might not. Now, if you're actually testing people positive, so that's it's, a it's, it's a mix of I, yeah, okay, so it's a mix of right three more tested positive Sunday, Willie Sneed, Mark Andrews, Matthew. And look, the game was supposed to originally be Thursday night, prime time, on Thanksgiving. Like you're not moving, and it was the best game of the day, Steelers right. Ravens. We're talking, you know, right. what is that? That's a AFC. What is that? AFC North. We're talking like, you know, that's that, that that's a physical conference. That's a very that's that's a good game for Thanksgiving compared yeah. to the other, you know, four cupcake teams that were playing earlier in the day. You know, instead I got to sit here and watch the freaking Lions play the the Texans after you know they're firing Matt Patricia, who's a freaking rocket scientist. You know, like us that gets uh, you know? Uh, what was I gonna say? Um, that's what makes this whole thing, I think, really difficult. Is that is that um, you're trying to figure it out amidst of not exactly knowing. It's unprecedented. You, yeah, you try to figure it out. You're but, trying to figure stuff out based on going off of not having anything to go off of. <laughs> right? Like, there's no look. If I'm trying to learn how to do something, I can go read a book or research. You need a manual, right? You need a manual on this. You're right? Like this. This is like, you know, back in the night, we're trying to land somebody on the moon here. Like nobody's ever been to the moon. How the hell do we do it? That's right. That's great, great, great point. Um, okay. I want to talk about one other local story, which I thought, and I want to get your opinion on it. Um, Rutgers. Yeah. I, I guess, I guess you would say it's a, a mild upset right over Purdue. And um, I was sure the amount of time. Yeah, I, really I, I think that's the I kind of thought they played each other. What's that? I think that's the only only the third time that they've ever played each other. What well, you watched the full game, right? Yeah, I I was locked and sealed, glued to it. I I watched I think from the end of the second quarter on because they were behind at halftime, and um, and you know what I thought was really interesting. So obviously their quarterback to play something from practice, um, uh, practice from. Um, Something I think of a draw, right? No, of a draw. That's the starting quarterback normally. Something must happen during he, a week. Sikowski, Sikowski started. Sikowski and Langdon, they kind of mix the pass or runner. And now Langdon's obviously been there and been there Wildcat. He's the goal line, line guy. Yeah, yeah. Bergen Catholic, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, he, uh, I think a family of athletes, too. I think this, their sister's like, uh, his sister's like, uh, Championship pole holder or something. Well, look, um, he's a monster to begin with. Yeah, yeah. The, and he, Guy can obviously guy like is, for this because Guy coached him when he was at Bergen. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He he, he he's a uh, you know, there's no doubt about it. He's uh um he, he played great in that game. What what I thought was interesting is this. So you wa- you probably wa- did you watch the Michigan game? I did, unfortunately. And, and then what was it? I, I watched them. Penn State, correct. 
No, no, I watched Michigan. I'm saying Michigan. Oh, you Rutgers. watched Michigan Rutgers? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Michigan yeah, Rutgers. I watched, yes, I watched that game. And then I watched, um, I watched them play that, and I watched them play Rutgers play them, and I watched their Ohio State <laughs> game. I think who else did they? They I'm I, I at the Illinois right. game, which was like a lot. Uh, they lost because I thought they would beat them, but right, that was the game that everybody thought they would win. What what I thought was, and then I watched their other their their win before that, which was Michigan was, State. Michigan State. So here here's why I thought it turns out not really as bad as I guess everybody's thinking as you go along here. Well, I Washington. like the offensive creativity. <laughs> I like the offensive creativity. Uh, so uh, what I what I like, and we, we talk about this all the time with trick plays and all you gotta make trick plays. It, it's gotta be something that's part of your offense, right? And um that's everybody just knows this is part of your offense. Right. Not as a kind of anomaly, which a, a lot of coaches run, um, but as a um as right, a, you have to do it as part of your as part of your your package. Package. throwing stuff out there going crazy. That's a package, right? So, yeah. um, so what's really cool about it is uh, they utilize those things to be successful against Ohio State and get a boost from an energy standpoint. And I think it made the play overall like really good. And then I think what was really cool was like Michigan. I mean, that was back. They were up big. Michigan switched quarterbacks, got back in the game. The way that they just – first of all, their fire and their enthusiasm playing is awesome. It's like – uh, Chiano, the number one thing I think he's brought culture. Yeah, the culture. Like that's just that's their people playing hard. How hard they're playing, you know that eventually, yeah. eventually, good things are going to happen. It may take a little bit of time, but you could see that in each game. And then Purdue, you know, you talked about that their I think their best linebacker went out, and that became an opportunity to really run the ball downhill. They took advantage of it, beat Purdue. That's, that's really what it was. But I love, like, I love the ability. It's one of my favorite things in offense, and you know, you coaching me, is when the the OC adapted. He just adapted to whoever his quarterback was. So when Noah Vidraw was a quarterback, you know, Michigan, he was running certain packages, certain things. When when Tukowski comes in, he was running certain things. When Johnny Langan's in, he's running certain things, and it. It's given that extra boost because you know the defense is going to play better under Shiano. That's part of the whole chop oh, and the enthusiasm, right? Defense is their first first part that that improves right away. And they had a kind of a pretty good defensive group to begin with that was improving. And well, was- I mean, you know, you look back and you you know Chris Ash coming from a defensive background, right, you know, right, right. You, know, you can talk about Chris Ash and the situation and and what he was into, but I mean, you know, look, man, I mean, we know it, look. It, 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 Rutgers is a, an incredibly tough place to play, a tough place to win. You know, we've seen that just from in our time, you know, wherever. Um, and and for Chris Ash coming in as a defensive guy, you knew that the defense was 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 going to be okay. And but if you look at it, I, I believe he had like four offensive coordinators in four years. You know what I mean? So to get that the thing rolling, now you bring back Shiano, you're going to have life automatically. You know what I mean? Culture itself. Then he makes a couple moves here or there, puts together a phenomenal staff, right? We can't talk about it enough how much, you know, the way he's – we see, we look at every move, you know, and you and I, and we talk about it and we say, oh, well, this is why he did this or this is why this guy's hired or, you know what I mean? You know, he's right. got – you know, he's got Augie, Augie Hoffman from St. Joe's in Montville to puts him on staff right away. You know, he's got Nunzio Campanel from Bergen, puts him on staff. So you're talking about two guys that are linked into the state high school stuff right away and puts them on staff. He goes and takes a guy like Fran Brown, who, who's who's known as a, a very, you know, a big time recruiter in South Jersey. Um, so he can handle that, that South Jersey aspect, that, the, that PA aspect of it. You know, um, he goes out and he gets Gleason, uh, as his offensive coordinator, an up and coming younger guy who got his start at Princeton, goes one year to the Big Twelve and and comes in here now, and now you're starting to add a little excitement to it to the offense, which you know you can look back to Rutgers, you know Rutgers and Shiano during the first run, and look they were you know a ground and pound team. You know we're talking Ray Rice, we're talking uh, you know Leonard, right? We're talking run the ball first you know, and then throw off of it. You know what I'm saying? So now you come into it and you're adding a little bit of excitement with these other guys in Gleason's offense. Yep. And I think it just changes a lot of things. And like you said, the, the idea that, you know, 
he knows he has a quarterback in in Langdon, but maybe not the maybe not a quarterback for his offense, right? So what does he do? So he takes it and he says, "Look, all right, here's your package. This is what we're going to do, and you know what? We're going to do it consistently." So now you get into a game like the other day with Purdue, and all of a sudden that package, that Wildcat package, is more effective than when Satowski's in here. All right, well let's do it. And it turns out to them running, you know, QB power I know, 20 times times. In the second half, man. I mean, it really look, we I, how many times do I say it's like sometimes us we as coaches out coach ourselves? Like sometimes it's literally just like, you know, let's just line up and go and do you don't have to change anything, man. If it's working and you're getting three, four yards a pop running QB power, why am I gonna change it? You know? So I think that's something that but obviously at the end of the day, it comes back to, to culture and to, uh, you know, to mindset. And you're looking at a team. Um, I believe they have, you know, last year, I think when I was watching the game, they, they had a stat and it was uh, Rutgers had caused, you know, I think they have 10 turnovers. They've caused 10 turnovers or something this season so far last year, they had two, I think the whole season, something like that. Really? Like, yeah, you're just looking at little statistics like that. Explosive plays. Well, look you know? at Krushank, right? Krushank on the on the kick or kick return. Just I doing mean, doing the transfers he got with him, like Krushank as a transfer, um, and some of the other guys that they got. Obviously, Vidral, the quarterback, but the, the guys they got as transfers in itself. He just drilled another huge transfer today. A kid, uh, they they. Listen, that guy that returned the kick return for a touchdown, the last time he did that was last year's Rose Bowl. At Wisconsin. He was at at Wisconsin. Wisconsin. The guy they got today, they said, might be the second best returner behind him from Kansas State. Kids transferred. Like, so now he's starting to bring yeah. in some of these guys. And and look, it, it, I'm partial because, you know, we're from here. And, and uh, we've always said if we could get everybody to stay home at Rutgers, it would be a scary thing to, to see. But if you're not – a big time recruit in New Jersey. How is that not on your radar to stay home, to play for a Jersey guy in front of mom and dad, you know, who are going to be at every game in the big 10, you know, it's not the big East, it's the big 10, you know, so you're going to play your Ohio state. You're going to get, so you basically, you know, you're going to get a shot at one of the best teams in the, in the country every single year, you know, and then it's just a matter of, you know, are you going to see Wisconsin? Are you going to see Penn State? Are you going to see, you, you know, it depends on which one of those other big time team, big 10 teams are going to be up there that year. Iowa. I mean, look at these teams that they're dialing up against, you know? And now I'm going to go play for a guy in, Chia, in Coach Chiano who's been at the highest of highs as far as you're talking NFL head coach, right? I mean, right. college. Highest of highs, Ohio State defensive coordinator. You know, even when nobody knew where the hell he was, he was, oh, he's the defense coordinator, Ohio State. Like, you know, most people don't know that stuff. So if he really wants to ride this thing out and go go with it for the next couple of years, it could be a, it could be a pretty fun and interesting thing uh, to watch him turn this thing around, not, you know, for the second time. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that that's – at this point is basically uh, to me almost inevitable that it's going to be turned around. It's just a matter of this is one. This is he hasn't even had a full, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and these are not normal times. He's not doing in-home visits. You know, they're not bringing guys on campus. You know, it's it's just craziness. And it's, tough. it's really good. It's really good. I mean, and, and sustainability is the key. And and. Uh, get the jump start. I mean, think about it. So he took over. We'd have to do some fact checking stuff, right? So for, yeah. I, when he when he took over in what year at Rutgers originally? 99, 2000, 2001, somewhere around there, right? I'll find it for you right now. Let me see. I want how many years until he got to, you know, because obviously. So when, when everybody Curry, remembers 2006, Louisville, let's right? Look at it. Yeah, let's look at it here. Uh, all right. Jeez, uh, now I know I'm getting a little bit old because uh, when, Listen, I, when, I, when, I, when I pop this on the screen. Yeah, well, the fact that he recruited me when I was in high school is. Yeah, you know, let me pop this on the screen here. It's going to be. Uh, I want to say it was 99. Uh, what's your guess? What, so what I, year I have it up. What, what's your guess? What year, what year he got there? I say 99. It's 2001. Holy shit. Let's see. 
2001. So 2001 season, season, season with his first season. 2001. Wikipedia wants me to donate 275. I'll have to wait till next time to do that. Sorry. Uh, um, let's see. He was, yeah. So 2001. It was two and nine. That's 19 years That's ago. 19 years ago. That was his first year. And it took him. So, yeah. Like, when you did remember he those first couple of years were rough? Like, it wasn't brutal. Like, I remember him going out to Notre Dame getting smoked. So, he's way ahead of that curve this time. Regardless Absolutely. of wreck. Regardless of wreck. I don't even, I think wreck. This is one of those games get in the way uh, if, as far as wins and losses. Well, remember that the, the, the 2000 progress. game against Louisville on Thursday night when everybody rushed the field, and that was like that was the season. That was 2006, correct? They were 11 and 2. And then he sustained that all the way through. He had one. one, well, what, one, his, one what was one. his record his first year? 2 and 9. Yeah, because that's a little, little tiny for me. So it was two and nine, and then what was he in 0 2? 11, 5, 7, 1, 11, 5, 7, 4, 7, 7, 5, 11, 2, 8, 5, 8, 5, 9, 4, 4, 8, 9, 4. Yeah, but this is this is what's different. It's like, look, it's about bowl appearances, correct? Like in, in that. And then one, two, three, he had five straight bowl appearances, four at a. Uh, and then the one year they had a, like a little down year in 2010, but then 2011. And that's when he left. Uh, it was after he left, and because um, flood took over in what 2011? 2011, 2012 season. So he won five. He out of six won with won five out of six bowls, and then he was in Tampa for a couple of years, and then uh, I think Ohio State and all that stuff. But um, but yeah, yeah. So I mean, you're talking night. It, it, that's he. He had to be in his 30s. How old is he when he started? 40. Uh, well, he was ni- so 19 years ago. He took over there. 35 he was when he first got the job. Yep. yep. And, uh, and I'm screwed because I'm 34. So. Hey man, you're so good. You're so good in front of the camera, mate. You know, maybe not. Yeah, this is your. You know, your interview. My calling. I, I'd like you to get a little lighting because now as it's getting dark out, it's kind of getting hard to see. What? You. It's crazy. <laughs> the um. And that's you know what I mean, like those teams too. Like you look at Shiano because they were in the Big East back then. Who were they competing with? Miami, you know? Yeah. Well, Big, you know, Big East got good. It wasn't that good to start out with, but they had Miami and they had Virginia Tech, I guess. Virginia Tech, Syracuse. Syracuse was pretty good. Boston College. Boston College has been good. Yep. I mean, then they started adding teams like UConn and stuff, and then it just yeah. went oh. <laughs> I gotta take my husky shot. <laughs> we need we, we chose not to even play this season. The I know. I'm sorry. Hey, it's all right. My alma mater too, but they're they are playing in spring, so Montclair is playing in spring. Yeah. Are all, are all D3s playing in the spring? What's no, the- it's a league league thing. So the NJAC is going to play. And I believe, like, because the NJAC is kind of – has, like, you know, kind of like these Jersey teams and then a lot of the teams from, like, uh, you know, like like Wesley and Christopher Newport and those types of teams. So I believe those ones that are further what? south are Christopher Newport. Yes, it's a college, and they're pretty damn good. Are um, they good? Where, where yeah. are they? Where's yeah. that? They're D three. Christopher Newport, I believe, is oh, uh, is it Virginia? Christopher Newport, Newport no. News, Virginia. Is it? Yeah, I think it is. Wow, expensive school. Of course. Is it, wait, not. Wait, wait, they're in the NJAC? I believe so. Yeah, check the N- the the NJAC is now. Oh, well, uh, no. in it. I, mean, I got to fact check you on that one. When I was in it, they were in the U- Division Three USA South Athletic Conference. What is that? That's not well. When, check the NJAC then, because the NJAC is Wesley's in there. Frostburg, that's the state. That's the one I'm talking about. You're Frostburg. there, Frostburg. Yeah. 
Frost Those service. guys are all playing like the ones that are in the South are going to play, and then they're going to play four games up here. So I would pl- believe it would be like, say, like, so Montclair is probably going to go out and play. All right, all right, all right. Here, here, here's your test. You ready? We're going to play a little quick game. Oh, here we go. Stump, no longer, it's the, not Stump Rothenberg on ESPN Radio. It's Stump Coach D. All right. You, uh, the logos are up top. Let's see if you can name every team that it is. Uh, this and is I think team. you're right, by the way about what you just said, because they must have just got into it. So Christopher Newport must be in the end, Jack. But, all right, I'm going fl- I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to put it up there. I don't know how you'd even know. I don't even know how you would know that other than. You, you. Oh, okay. So across right. the top. Sorry, right. can, can, you, can you name, can you, is it too small for you? Will you hold on? It is, it is, but let me see the best I can. I can't right, really. So I guess the left is Christopher Newport, right? Right. So then you got Keene, Keen. Montclair State. Rowan, Salisbury. That's TCNJ, Salisbury? Okay. Salisbury, TCNJ, Wesley, William Patterson. Come on, man. That's what, what Wesley's in the end, Jack, now? Yes, brother. So Wesley, Coach, Coach, uh, Coach Boberts got I some. Did not. Coach Boberts, shout out. Coach Boberts. That's uh, it. Yeah, man. And so those teams, so like Christopher Newport and Salisbury. Hey, and Wesley, those teams used to be when I played there. It was Western Connecticut, it was uh, Cortland. What happened to Western Con? They must have, you know, gone to another something. Because I thought Cortland was in it. Yes, they used to be, and for a couple of years, Buffalo State was in it. Um, it SUNY, must be Empire so, Conference or something. So, yeah, SUNY uh, Mooresville, SUNY Brockport. So what they did was rather than continue rather rather than have NJAC teams go north, now NJAC teams just go south. Empire Eight is that it? Maybe? Yeah, yeah. Well, the Empire Eight used to be like uh, Springfield College. The oh, Empire Eight, like Hobart, whoever the Saxons are, Hartwick, Hartwick, always a good one too. Now, Mor- Mor- out of Morrisville, what is Morrisville? Uh, SUNY Morrisville. SUNY I don't even know. It's been like as as in State University of New York. Uh, they must not have football. What Saint about Charles. Brockport? Say, say, oh, that's Brockport. So there's there's two SUNY schools. That's SUNY. The St. John Fisher. St. John Fisher. Yeah, those guys were all in a conference together. Utica, and then who who's who's the? Uh, don't you have a quarterback? Oh, in what? No, Springfield. Well, I'm saying like those schools. So the winner of the Empire Eight and then the winner of the NJAC usually would square off in that first round of the Division Three playoffs when I was there. Okay. But I look at like I look at our out of conference schedule when I was there. First, um, you have light, and we, we definitely need we're gonna need some light. <laughs> Woo! Um, dark. Our out of conference schedule. My senior year, we opened up. We played at Wilkes, then Springfield came to us, and then we went to Wesley. So we start off the year with three road games or three, I'm sorry, three out of conference games. And those teams were all ranked in the top 25. Now, two years after I left in 2009, um, Montclair lost week one and then ran the entire table and ended up losing to Mount Union in the like quarterfinals or semifinals of the division three playoffs. But so you're, we're talking about, you know, just bringing it back. You want to talk about talent across New Jersey. Not only is Rutgers, you know, we're talking about Rutgers being the, 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 you know, the, the scholarship division one school, but you're also looking at a bunch of division three schools in this state that could reap the rewards of them being good. Cause you know, you look at it, you got Rutgers as your, as your big time division one, you have Mammoth, who's in our backyard, who's an FCS school. Right. And then other than that, it's all division threes. And then now a JUCO. So you're talking, you got Keene, you got Montclair, TCNJ, William Patterson. (laughs) No doubt. Um, And then you have Sussex County Community who just started a JUCO program. That's Which great. I think will be interesting, you know, because I, I mean, are you going to compete with, you know, I don't know if they're going to compete with, 
you know, Lackawanna or any of those, you know, cause Juco is not really a thing here in the Northeast. A lot of our guys either prep school or go somewhere else. Like I said, because we have division threes, you know, you look at Florida, they have five division one schools, but they don't have, um, but they don't have any, uh, you know, there's no D threes in Florida. Coach, do we have any athletes like this? I know. I saw this. Your Bobcat. I love this. Is that a Florida Bobcat? Woo. That's ridiculous. That, that's that's pretty sick. It's actually scary. I just want to see it one more time. Are you trying to say, do you have any of those in your backyard? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You got someone like that, boy. You win a lot of games. <laughs> you think, do you think uh, you think Wall has anybody like that? I don't know if they can jump like that. I don't think anybody has anyone that can jump like that. I think the one person that made it, somebody said something, and I, I think it was great. And you said it. You hit on it, too, and I want to come back to it because I think it's it's big time. Can anybody be anybody on any given day? Absolutely. But would Wall have the ability to play in that conference and fight every week like those guys do? You know? I, no. 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 I mean, that's just not. Does – would – an RBC, would a Donovan, would a Vienni, could those guys go up there and do that week in, week out? I mean, why is it why is it so often that we see no. RBC or, you know, we see the parochials down here run tables and do so well until they get to the can, playoffs? Can anyone have a, te- a team in a year that can do that as far as – you know what? It's sustained, like like a sustainability. So and they do it every single year. Not until not until we get we, we get it. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah. I do like I do like, the, I do like the fact that this year you really saw teams that were some teams say we'll play anybody anytime anywhere, but you saw that this year. Yeah, that, that made it cool. I, 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 that's why I think you should also have. You know what? I I just thought of this. Now we were supposed we end up playing hack and sack anyway, but we were supposed to play the first game. That should be your. That should be like, your. Everybody should have one that. game. Like somebody posed that 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 first weekend should be take a North Jersey power, take a South Jersey power, or whoever you want. Like you know, what I mean, like the West Jersey League and uh, Shore Conference. You know, I don't know North. North Jersey teams from different conferences, a North Jersey and a South Jersey. Like, just get a whole bunch that first week zero be a bunch of, like, exciting matchups, you know, or week zero. Like, maybe – give, give me a Ramapo wall. Oh, that would be great. How are – you know, RBR. Anybody give, me a, give me a – give me a – give me a – give me a – you know, give me an RBC Pope John. Like, they did scrimmage this year. They, I think they did scrimmage, right? Yeah, you know, give me a seat in hall, give me a seat in hall prep modern day. I, I just think that that would be really cool because it would start the year off right away with like a whole bunch of matchups that would never normally happen. And I look at it like look, kudos this year, Ocean City. Hey, DePaul, you got an open date. Why don't you come down and play us? In that front was of the- cool. Let's that was go. Cool. cool. Hey, Same with uh, Cherokee, Cherokee. Hey, St. Joe's, you want to come down and play? Yeah, let's do it. Dial it up. Let's go. Or even, um, who was the school that went up to Ramapo and beat them? Oh, uh, Group One. Yeah, well, Group One Powerhouse. Who are they? Yeah, I, I wish. I wonder if someone could tell. Oh us. yes, because that's your favorite mascot. My favorite mascot. Maybe you know, <laughs> outside of ours, our favorite mascot. I don't know if I say it right. If it's the chimeras or the chimeras, right? I don't know. It's, like, I don't it's know. like you know, it's like me being a Coastal Carolina fan for the Chanticleers. And, and, that's right. That's exactly right. And then who, who? I don't know if anybody knows, but the most famous person. He didn't play football, though, as far as I know, to come out of uh, that high school. Do you know what? that? Wow. Do you know who the most famous person is to come out of that high school? What the one? What the one we can't pronounce? <laughs> well, no, I, we can't pronounce. Yeah, the mascot. Um, and they're a group one, right? Carl Lewis, man, Carl Lewis. 
Oh, that's right. You said that. That's your track. Coach, now you're showing your true colors with your track. That's my track side there. Um, Speaking uh, of other sports, we did see the governor post this morning for everybody that didn't know. Now that we're now uh, uh, winter sports are pushed back even more so. Now, the only winter sport that was really starting, you know, before this is said to be whatever was um, obviously the uh, uh, hockey but everything is now pushed back till, till January 2nd, which I think is, is kind of a good move. Um, once again, I feel for these kids doing indoor, indoor sports, but um, at the same time, man, like we got to hopefully get a hold of this whole thing and, and control it as much as we can and then kind of go from there. Because I mean, other than that, winter sports are just going to be, you know, Oh boy. You know, I, like I said, like football was one beast in itself. I would not want to be a wrestling coach or, or, or a basketball coach going into this, this winter. Um, for the most part last year, you kind of had your entire winter season, you know, it might not have ended a certain way. I mean, I believe we went into quarantine a week after the state wrestling stuff went down at, at Atlantic city, you know? So, um, and even us just looking at going forward, looking at, you know, what are we going to do off season wise, as far as, you know, working out and things like that for our guys, you know, um, I think that's going to be a whole different beast of something that we have to conquer and who knows what's going to come of it, you know? Um, what was I going to say, just, just looking at the chat here, Chris Latrella, who is the video head of video for Northern Highlands who is with uh, Partridge back with PC and, and obviously um, living. Yep. Now, now over at uh, 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 Northern Highlands helping out coach Russo. Um, coach Russo got a hell of a thing going right there, right over there yeah. right now, man. Yeah. Like, well, I, I tell you, so that was interesting what we learned, right? When we play hack and sack, like we didn't know, we didn't know how um, our publics would compare, you know? Correct. And uh, we played really well against hack and sack and, and, who played really well against four? We realized that that league is like compared four that programs league. that we respect. You know, right. so that not that we don't respect not. others. You know, but like at this, like we know that these programs that that Hackensack played were good. Right. So yeah, exactly. So the compat like the old Japan. Uh, yeah, who was it? It, was, it was old Japan. Ridgeworth. What uh, what was it? It was old Japan Highlands, Ridgeworth. Wayne Valley. Wait. Right, so those leagues are probably comparable to our league, like with like. Um, Look, I'll, I'll take a lot of these four teams and put them up against a lot of senior, uh, against a lot of super. Like that, would be, that would be cool crossovers. Those, those. Uh, think about some of those matchups. Right, like leagues that we're in. I think the group. Well, like I said, I mean, I, you could go down. Like I, I like I told you, I went I went through it today and just. Took Riverdale, the- right Hills. Chris, Chris is updating me. Yeah. You know, like, and, and our, like, our conference, like, with, like, the group three. Right, and you put those guys against, like, a, uh, put them against, like, a Raritan, you know, uh, like, Raritan, like a Bondell, Purple School Ball, up the street. Uh, Ocean. How about, like, even, like, a Southern? Southern. What are they, four? Are they might be, are they I brought this, You know what, Ultimate. What are they, five or four? Southern is, I believe, a four. I'd love to see Southern Phillipsburg. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Phillipsburg's a whole different um yeah and they didn't even get to play their game against Easton this year man that that's 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 a shame yeah that is a shame that's such there's such a shame. now does our rivalry oh, with branch, we got, our, we got our, our Thanksgiving uh uh partner so there was, so it was what 98 so years this year we, we had it broken so sad uh shame. so what is it so does that still count as a year I don't so, know I don't know I count it. <laughs> Southern Regional. Let me see. Southern Regional. Southern Regional is a five. So play them against Phillipsburg. They're five. Even like you take like a Lacey, throw them up north. They would compete. Like, like Lacey, but yeah. All the, I mean, all those teams, like, like it's all comparable good stuff. It's good, good football. Um, I, you know, I think that they – what do you think – well, they do do, I guess, a public ranking, I guess, in, in the state because they do it, like, by group, so they don't have to do do a whole new – I would love to see it. Take take your – you got your big nine private schools up north, right? You got Bosco, Bergen, Joe's, Peters, Paramus Catholic, Del Barton, Pope John, DePaul, Seton Hall Prep, nine. 
right? Throw in St. John Vianney, Donovan, Red Bank Catholic, modern day. Rank them, playoffs, go. Yep. Right? Like, go, you know? And uh, I, I just, I just, I, I don't, like, to me, I just find it, you know, we open up against St. John Vianney week one. That's what it was. Wall opens up against Point Borough week one. You know? Uh, I just, I mean, I believe so. I, I'm not, you know, I can go through and find schedules, but, and, you know, there was a lot of back and forth about, you know, they won't even, if it's true, it's it's interesting because Bergen, you know, Coach Coach Vito up there, he went on record saying, look, we reached out to Holy Spirit and Wall this season and they didn't want to play. Yeah. So, you know, I get it. No, I, yeah. You play who's on your schedule, and and that's it, right? It is what it is. You play who's on your schedule, and you be if you beat them all, you're that damn good, you know. Um, and that's what Wall did. So kudos to them. It doesn't have to be a, a you know a matchup as far as who's who or you know whatever that stuff is. Like you're the best team. You got your ranking. You're good to go. Now, can you do it again next year? Or do you win a state title next year? Because I I don't know, man. If they play I, I, Donovan, if they play Donovan again in that game, I don't know if they come home with it. And and you watched it, and I got the play by play from you, you know. So it worked, you know. Like I said, you saw it firsthand. But look, it was I, a great game, great game, yeah, phenomenal. I just hope they do it. I, I you know, if it if we do have this short conference title game, which I think would be freaking awesome. And I would push to have it because I think it literally would be that awesome. You know, I think it's something that, you know, let's hold it at a, a neutral freaking site. Like Mammoth, get in on this, you know, go, go play in front of, go play at, you know, Mammoth university, you know, do, let's do something like that. Make it, you want to make it short, full blown, all shore type stuff, do it that way. You know, I think that would be awesome. I think it's something they could build on going forward, you know? Absolutely. I hope they do, you know, as far as that's concerned, because I think it would be, I just think it's something that, you know, it would be, it would be awesome. I think it's something that a lot of people in this state have been looking to for, uh, you know, a long time. There's no doubt about it. And, and that's always going to be your, you know, it's going to be your, your, whatever is it, you know, publics, privates, this, that, I mean, look, we said it this year, people are like, Oh, you know, you can play with Vienna. You can play with Vienna. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure we can. But at the end of the day, man, like we get kids from three towns. Vienna gets kids from how many towns? You know, um, it's just something then that's that's different. But yeah, yeah, public private is definitely a different thing. There's no, there's no doubt about it. Um, and I think across the country, you know, you go to Texas, huh? it's flipped. Like the public schools are way better than the. The private schools, and that's because the investment, the investment the way Texas football is. I mean, Texas football has, you know, a lot of it probably has to do with Texas football and the school system. So, like, Texas, for, for those of you who don't know, is it's all like ISDs, which are independent school districts, and they fund, and those are regional schools, school regional. districts. Which is how a lot of the schools, the public schools down here in South Jersey are regional schools. Like we're Red Bank Regional where, you know, Red Bank, Little Silver, Shrewsbury, all three of those towns go to that high school, you know, whereas up north you're dealing with, you know, pretty much one town, one school. Right. That's what they're, I mean, the top, top 10 in the top 10 in Texas. Allen, Caddy. Uh, the, 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 who, who do you think is the, no, in six A? It's number one. Is that's the biggest? Is Galena North Shore? I never Galena Park North Shore. I don't even know who they are. Then two is. is what are they? They have there's six. They have six divisions. Yeah, that must be a new new powerhouse. Whereas, now, so Florida has eight. Galena Park must be a new uh, an up and coming. Oh, Houston. 
it must yeah, be one of the most like densely populated. I mean, think about their their you know that's a new power. Now, Florida has eight divisions, you know. Number two is Duncanville, which is a, a yep. monster program. Austin Austin Westlake is three. Allen is four. Allen. Lake Travis is five, another powerhouse. Katie Tompkins, six. Cypress Bridgeland must be down by Houston, seven. Eight is Cedar Hill, which is Cedar Hill, Duncanville are in the same area. But uh, yeah, is that Dallas, Fort Worth? Uh, they're they're southern, southern, south of Dallas. Allen is north of Dallas. Lake Travis is Austin. Katie might be north of Houston, maybe, or uh, Galena Park. We just I just looked. It was Houston. I think Cypress Bridgeland is Houston. Katie Katie High School is nine there. Cy Fair, which will must also be Houston. And then the Soto is eleven, which is the Soto, Duncanville, and and Cedar and Cedar Hill are all back to back to back. It's and what's his name is um, – what's his name went to – who was it? Um, what's his name? Quarterback for uh, Murray. Murray went to where? Allen. Right. Murray went to Allen. D- Duncanville I – I, he must be a senior. They have this great quarterback. I think he's a senior this year. Um, and uh, let's see. Let's see. DeSoto. Who is – yeah. We see like that's it. So like you relate to Florida, like, and you know, you know Texas high school football pretty well. Pretty good, pretty. And good. I think I know, I think I know Florida pretty well just from you know being down there and, and having a lot of you know my my buddy being a coach at a good program down there. And you know the thing down there too is, you know, they have eight divisions. In Florida, and Florida, Florida, yeah, and Florida for what's going on right now. I mean, they're just they're still three weeks away from crowning a champ. Yeah, I know. You know? Uh, the weekend of the twenty second, seventeenth is a Thursday, I think. So Thursday, yeah. So the weekend of like like Friday's the eighteenth, nineteen, twenty. Like that's going to be the Florida State Championship, and you know that that's been just a because they're going county based down there as to far as who's playing and what's going on, you know, as far as rules and who's playing when and, and if you're allowed to play and all that type of stuff. So, I mean, look, if we're talking top football states, you know, if you're, you're obviously mentioning Texas and you're mentioning, you know, Texas, Florida, Florida, California. California. Right. I mean, I looked at the max preps rankings had, I think Bergen is our highest ranked ranked team. And I think they're 50 something after beating Peters this weekend. Yeah, it's Chris Latrell brought up uh, a good question. It's true. Uh, the reason why Texas, I think, don't, doesn't play is because they have 15 minute quarters. They cut down the field. Well, I know. Yeah. Well, I, I that was the first thing I asked when I You're was never going to get agreement on that. Like, when I was at Bosco, in Texas, I, said, you know, I went to Bosco and I said, "Look, we're going to Maryland to play. You know, we're going to Florida to play. We're going to Utah to play. Why don't we play anybody in Texas?" And it's a rule thing. Because depending on where you play, you play for those rules. Exactly. Um, like I said, Florida, you know, halfway through the first quarter, you get the freaking – you get a, a water break. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So, and uh, obviously, depending on where you play, you know, your referees come into to a little bit of a play. Well, anything else on your mind for today? We wrap it wrap it up until uh, – I, I think that's not a bad first uh, – not a bad first show. Let's let's hope this is the first of many. We'll get some guests on. GB obviously is going to have to be our one of our first. Yeah, we're we're going to have to get, uh, figure out how to just boom, bring people right on and send them. Yeah, we got, we, uh, somehow during this code, we got to make that happen in person though, because you know GB can cook, man. I think it's his. I think his wife does. Uh, oh, they both, both, they both, both can cook. They're dangerous combo. Like, well, can. let's get Mrs. GB to you know Jersey juice this thing up. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right, man. All right. Well, it's great, 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 uh, great podcast. It's great talking with you. And uh, man, we, we we keep doing this as many times as we can do it. You know what I mean? So listen, as, uh, uh, it, it's uh, it's therapy for us. That way, you know, we're not driving you know each other up a wall, and then we can at least get some of these other guys on here. I mean, look at that first first one. We got Coach Davis and GB. I mean, really nice hit. 
Yeah, oh yeah, we had, we had a nice little chat going. So yeah, and we look, and we didn't even pump this thing yet. We so we didn't even get this thing going. We didn't even advertise. No, there's no, no advertising yet. No advertising yet. We we we, we, get, we got word of mouth. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, and for us, that's that's good enough. Sometimes we don't even need that. All right. All right, man. All right. Hey, listen. This is our current banner right now. <laughs> that's it. Football Dude. the kitchen. Football the kitchen sink. That's it, brother. I love it. All right, man. <laughs> Wayne Jane, that's all we need. All right, brother. Have a great day, man. All right, my guy. All right, bye.